Recently I realized how many of the ATP professionals actually use extended rackets. But when I wanted to try it out for myself, I couldn't find any video tutorials or articles and anything like that on the subject of extending the rackets. So I decided I'll try it out for myself and come up with a way of how to do it. In this video I'll show you what I have come up with. I've decided that I wanted to extend this Wilson blade here and the bubble at pure strike. I've identified these two rackets that I have as the best options to extend, uh, but I won't go into detail of why is that here. In this video I'll just show you how I extended this pure strike. I've extended the pure strike by 12 millimeters or what would be about half an inch and uh, the blade I've extended by 6 millimeters or about a quarter of an inch. Here on this video you can see me hitting and testing the extended blade and at the end of this video I have a clip of me hitting with the extended pure strike. What I should uh, mention before we go into how I extended the racket is that one of the main purposes of doing this is to have a higher swing weight with uh, a lower mass of the racket. Extending the racket for every uh, 6 mm increases the uh, swing weight by about 10 points. So now let's take a look at how I actually extended the racket. So here are some of the things and tools that we'll need to actually extend the racket. The first one of course being the racket itself. I have the bubble at pure strike racket here. The old version of the pure strike in the red color. Uh, I've already removed the base grip and the staples that hold the butt cap in place. There are four tiny staples like this uh, on the butt cap that you need to remove in order to then remove the butt cap. We won't need the butt cap as we'll use this to make the mold for the uh, extension of the racket handle. The next thing that we'll need is some materials and tools. I got a big box here with some of the materials and tools that we'll be using. We want to start by making a mold for our racket extension. We'll do that by using this uh, blue silicone rubber and to go with this um, we'll use this second compound which will cause the, the silicone to cure and harden to actually make the mold. Uh, the mold will be made by using the racket handle so that the silicone takes the shape of the handle and then we we'll cast uh, the other material in the mold to actually make the extension. Let's set this aside. Uh, the actual extension that we'll cast will be made out of, a, out of these two components which together make a, make a material that we'll cast into the mold and will form the actual racket extension. Next we need some uh, some of the tools to, to mix. I got this uh, glass jar here in which we mix the casting material and just something to st steer the components together. Lastly we'll need something to, to fix the butt cap back on the handle. In this case I'll be using some high density glue in two components to, to fix the butt cap back on the handle. You can also staple the butt cap back or use some other method. Last but not least uh, I have some protective uh, stuff here like these gloves. We'll be dealing with some toxic components so always make sure to use gloves. We'll also need something as a container to put our silicone rubber and the racket handle in to make our mold. Um, in my case I'll be using this old plastic bottle of which I cut the top off so I can um, pour the silicone rubber in here. Lastly I'll also be using this trash bag here which I'll just use as a protection for my table so things don't get dirty. First we need to mix our blue silicone rubber. We'll just 
pour the silicone rubber in this plastic container that I made earlier. <coughs> Make sure to tear your scale so it uh, shows zero. Um, then we can measure the actual weight of the silicone rubber. We want to make sure to, to fill this container just over half, I think will be enough to make the mold high enough to make the extension of our racket. There, I think that will be enough. Some nasty stuff right here. I'll clean this later. Now we see here we have 280 grams of silicone rubber. Now we need to also add this, uh, this hardening component to the silicone so that it will actually harden into the mold. Uh, we need to calculate how much uh, of this component we need to add. It is recommended to, to add between 3 and 5%. I'll be using a 5% mixture. <coughs> so I need to calculate the, how much grams of this I need to add to the rubber. Okay, so I need to add 14, almost 15 grams of the hardening component. Now the scale is again tapped to zero, so I won't have troubles with measuring the, the mass of the second component. <clears throat> there, I think that will be enough. Now we need to hurry things up a bit before the silicon rubber starts hardening. We need to mix this well. We won't need the, the scale anymore. I can set the scale aside. And now just I need to mix this well. This will be enough for now. <clears throat> now before we continue what we need to do is to seal this hole at the end of the racket handle so that the silicone doesn't go inside and will actually get a flat top. Now that we've sealed the hole, we can put the racket handle inside our silicone rubber. Now I just hope that <coughs> I didn't pour too much silicone in this container, that when I put the racket handle in, it will pour over the top because the volume will increase when the racket handle goes inside. Let's put the racket handle in. Make sure it's at the center of the silicone and container and, and now we have to set this aside to cure and make sure that the racket is, uh, <clears throat> is facing some perpendicular surface. 
Here you can see how I fix the racket on a vertical surface with some electrical tape. I will leave this standing in the silicone rubber for about a day and then I will remove the racket and I will have the mold ready for casting. The silicone rubber has hardened now and I have already removed it from the container and removed the racket from the silicone rubber itself. Now I'll just trim off the unnecessary parts and get the mold ready for casting the racket handle extension. I have already removed some of the foam from inside the handle so that the casting material will be able to flow inside. Next I'll make some channels inside the existing racket handle mold with the same purpose of the molding material being able to flow inside and make the connection between the existing racket handle stronger. Now I have to prepare the mold on the racket handle so that the casting can begin. Again, protection is very important. Next up, I need to mix the component A and component B in the right ratios. Keep in mind that we are working with mass ratios and not volume ratios. Before this, I calculated that around 50 grams of the molding material will be just enough. Using around 30 grams of component A, I need to calculate how much of the component B I need to add to get the ratio of 10 to 8. Next, I need to mix the components together well, but make sure not to mix them too long, because after a couple of minutes, the mixture becomes hot and starts to harden. When the mixture is ready, just pour it inside the pre-prepared racket handle mold and wait for it to harden. After a couple of minutes, the mixture starts hardening and it hardens fast enough so you can actually see it changing the color and changing the structure. This particular material and components that I'm using for casting actually uh, harden up very fast and you can remove them from the mold in just a couple of minutes. Next, I will weigh the racket to see how much mass this added and then I'll measure how much of the material I need to take away so that I get the desired length. In this case, I extended it for uh, 1.2 cm or about half an inch. Next, I will grind off some of the material with sanding paper to get the length just right and also to remove some of the rough edges. Now I'm weighting the racket so I see how much of the mass I still need to remove to get the desired specs that I want for this racket. The new part is strong enough so we don't have any trouble making it hollow. Now I have achieved the desired weight and I can go on with reinstalling the butt cap on the racket hand. I'll be using the thick two component glue that I showed you earlier. Instead of this glue or together with the glue, you can also use a staple gun with staples to staple back the butt cap on the hand. Now just spread the glue evenly inside the butt cap and on the racket handle and after that put the butt cap back on and leave the glue to dry. After the glue hardened on the butt cap 
I just reinstalled the base grip and the over grip and I was ready to go out and test my new extended racket. Thank you for watching and if you enjoy this kind of content consider subscribing to my channel. And if you want to learn more about tennis equipment check out my webpage at impactingtennis.com.